What's going on fellas? Ain't posted a video in a while, so I figured I'd feed the dragon. You guys are probably getting pretty bored. This right here, what we're looking at is a spray nozzle array. This is just the valves that will be connected to these nozzles. These nozzles will be placed remotely inside of a flash dryer I'm building. We're spraying about 54 to 60 gallons per hour. And we've got this thing set on number 40 here. And that's important because when we get this thing to the job site in Kentucky, we're gonna to wanna to take a look at these very same operating parameters. This here is some footage of the preliminary testing I did before I took the machine to the customer. Just kind of testing it out and learning everything I needed to know about it so I could show them, you know, the presentation without looking like a fool. Uh, when you build a machine like this that's never been used before, um, here's a closer look. You gotta learn the machine. You gotta fire it up and it'll talk to you. So you'll be able to tell what needs to be done based on that first prototype. And this here is uh, designed around the principle of increasing residence time. I don't want the spray and the fire to just blast right out of this thing instantly. So I decided to go with a dual cyclone setup so that the spray mist and all that other stuff is trapped inside of this device and the ash and um, entrained particles will have plenty of time to burn away. This right here is about uh, 40 gallons an hour you're looking at. This is another preliminary test before we actually got the device to the job site for um, a demonstration. But it's running pretty good here. But we don't have enough air. That's our biggest battle is I didn't have enough air. So we're running at about 500 PSI's on those spray nozzles now. Those, there's the valve configuration. We just got this thing fired up. Sorry for the wavy video. I'm frantically trying to get this thing uh, running. As soon as that drip stops, we know that we're boiling. Look at the steam coming out of that stack back there in the background. It is just going crazy. We're at about 200 kilowatts, 180 to 200 kilowatts there on that flow rate. Barely perceptible at all on the flow rate. There's Shooty looking into the problem. That's the guy that helps me out on these out of town jobs a lot. He's the one that hauled this thing down here. It's doing extraordinary with that secondary uh, draft. We're, uh, I realize a lot of that smoke we're seeing is the burning hops. I thought it might be diesel fuel at first, but no, there's some hops in this um, effluent from a brewery. So that smoke is actually just that grain material, the grain mash. So I was, I was concerned it was diesel, but it's not. This here is some other uh, preliminary testing footage. There's explosion number one. Remember what I said, you gotta learn the machine. This ain't the type of thing you wanna do in front of a customer, although he's most likely gonna see this. I just didn't want it to look like I have no idea what I'm doing when I get there. So I always do preliminary testing to kind of learn the ropes what not to do. Um, I think I get three explosions out of this first preliminary test. This is the first time I have ever lit this machine. So I'm really not sure what it's gonna do. There's explosion number two right there. That was a good one there. But because we're, we're using diesel, there's no real danger of uh, destructive detonation. It's more of a deflagration there. So just kind of messing with this thing. And uh, there's explosion number three, I think. And just pretty much learning that uh, I don't have enough air to run this machine. There's a bottom burner shooting directly in the bottom of that uh, stack there that's supposed to act as a secondary draft fan also. That's why the flames are just shooting out of that thing like crazy. I've got a, another burner really cranking some heat through there. But uh, I just don't have the air pressure, guys. I finally stopped the test in defeat acknowledging I don't have this, the draft that I need or the air pressure. So I stayed up all hours of the night working on this monstrosity right here. This compressor is way too big for this setup. Uh, that's the little compressor that was on this thing. It will shoot air pressure out of the hose and maintain a pressure of about 60 PSI or so. That's full on, full open air right there, guys and it is maintaining a pressure, a back pressure, of uh, about 60 some PSI. So pretty incredible airflow. So with the two air compressors, we still didn't have enough air to properly run the test, but at least we got down the road. 
I also want to thank Jake over at Premier Plasma through getting me through a jam I had at like four o'clock in the morning trying to build this monstrosity. I encountered a, a 1D10T problem as they call it. Uh, pretty much my fault because I'm an idiot. So thanks Jake. All right, last topic. Man, have you guys been putting in some work on this channel. Look at this graph. I just uh, wanted to thank you guys for all your hard work and wanted to show you that your efforts are paying off over here. We're uh, basically going hyperbolic, son. 